I can't believe it, but I got a tattoo. Like, I got a tattoo, but not the kind that you would think is a tattoo. It doesn't really look like one. And in fact, it's really natural and I'm really excited about it. So I was like, I got to make a video on this. It's a new world of permanent makeup and it's no longer a big mistake to get it. This is Lip Blush 101. Thumbs up. This isn't a treatment that necessarily looks great days after you get it done. Since it is a tattoo, you have a healing process and it looks a little worse before it looks amazing. We're gonna go over everything because lip blush is interesting. It's like a micro droplet technique where permanent makeup is used to give a lipstick-like effect that fades after three or five years, but this micro droplet technique is so natural now and the technique is so advanced that you wake up not looking like you have a harsh tattoo on your lips, but instead of wearing lipstick, it just looks like you're naturally flush. I would say my clients honestly come back so much more like confident and happy, um, especially like my neutralization clients. This has been like an insecurity of theirs for years. Today we're sitting down with Madison, my favorite permanent makeup artist who's gonna tell us everything we'd need to know from an artist's perspective. A lot of artists out there that they prefer to just get in new clients because new clients is where we make our money. We don't make that much money on touch-ups. We have to go over how this can go wrong, but let's lay the land out first because there's two types of lip treatments and actually some people will need to start with neutralization in order to get a great lip blush result. This would mean having a first appointment and then a touch-up. Lip neutralization is all about creating an even canvas from lips that have cool tones or two or three different shades in them. And for people with melanin in their skin, this is a first step. I had this done first because I have not only pink in my lips, but blue and brown tones. This is the color of my lips before I had them neutralized. And anytime you have blue tones or cool tones, using the opposite on the color wheel is what will cancel out the darkness. So I took a little bit of dark blue eyeshadow and I just smudged it on my arm. If we color this with pink over top, there'll be a kind of a gray ashy color living under the skin. Instead, we color correct. And now instead of having a dark blue discoloration, there's a gradation from orange to a slightly pinkier shade where the discoloration was. And using that kind of color theory is how we neutralize. And that's important because lip blush is only about creating more saturation to the lips. So for example, if someone was a good candidate for lip blush, they would have just paler lips that they always feel like they need to have lipstick on. And that would mean they don't need a neutralization. But for someone like me, they have to do neutralization first and then lip blush second. Also, there's a whole group of people who have sensory issues with lipstick. They're not comfortable with the feeling of having lipstick on. I get really irritated by the sensations. One huge concern I've found Recently, I've had a lot of clients come in from previous artists that they've gone to, and they have basically permanent scarring on their lips. The best advice I can give you is to not impulsively book a treatment like this at a discount or without doing your proper research. Proper research looks like finding results from artists that are healed and not just what it looks like right after it's done. When you're making the choice to get this done, you have a lot of decisions to make, like what type of color do you want? Do you want something that looks natural or more intense or more soft? But what's most important is that it's done safely. And in an industry that is unregulated, like the tattoo industry, it's important that you do your research. Now, the first time I had this done, I didn't take a camera along and Madison did a beautiful job neutralizing my lips. And today I'm touching those up with a different artist who will give me a lipstick like effect. It's a little painful, but it is standard practice to use a numbing cream. So you don't really feel that much. And it's pretty quick, about an hour and a half maximum. This is a thing where there's like a dark side to it because Madison is gonna tell us a little bit about how this can kind of go wrong. But like I said, it can go really well. And thank goodness it did. Aftercare instructions are key. Any good artist will give you a detailed list of what you should and shouldn't do. When you're showering, you don't wanna get any water on your face. And if you do, keep a paper towel nearby to blot the water off. While your treatment, whether it's neutralization or lip blush, it's freshly done, 
the pigment hasn't settled into the skin properly and you're swollen. It's important to take extra care and not get things like toothpaste and water on your lips without blotting it off. Stay away from swimming and oily foods that have like an orangey oil to them, spicy foods as well, because these things can pull the pigment out of the skin, including hot coffee or wearing lipstick on your lip for the first week. Going back to that question that you asked me about how to sort of choose an artist, I feel like it is really important to go to somebody who does provide that information because it shows that they also understand it, right? You want somebody, you want to go to somebody who's very knowledgeable. But something important to me has always been to make sure my clients feel 100% comfortable. This is a very new technique um, within the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. So when I start out with any of my clients, I want to explain the entire process, why I'm doing what I'm doing, what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, what to expect afterwards. The entire thing, it's very important for my client to feel comfortable, especially as an artist. Um, I've noticed that if my client is uncomfortable, they're going to be in pain during this appointment. Um, and as a good human, I don't want to cause no one pain. It makes me very uncomfortable. So when you come home from the treatment, like I just had this done, you're seeing a version of it that is not really a reflection of how it's going to look once it's healed. But now it's your job after you get the treatment to take care of the results so that they blossom into the proper and most beautiful result that you can get. That means being careful while you brush your teeth, blotting off any excess water, and most importantly, keeping the ointment that your treatment provider gives you over your lips for seven days. The first seven days are the only days where you really need to pay attention to these rules. And you can see day one, they don't look good. And that's why I wanted to make this video because a lot of people will probably get this treatment and may look in the mirror and say, what did I just do? It's gonna look bad on day two. In fact, it'll look like you have a very bad lip liner tattoo, but it's because your lips are starting the peeling phase and it's gonna get better by a lot. You can use Aquaphor on your lips, but most artists will give you a kit to bring home and keep it on your lips all the time. I've only removed the product from my lips to show you what the lip blush looks like on day three. Day four, it actually started to look nicer, but very cool toned, totally different than the color I asked for. That's just because it's healing. On day five, I was actually really happy with the color, even though it's still not a reflection of what it's going to look like when it's done. It's starting to look beautiful. And two weeks later, I'm really happy I did this. It's amazing to rub your lips and not have any color come off because it's literally tattooed. I also noticed something about myself. I started to wear less makeup and I didn't really plan to do that, but I started to be pretty inspired by just waking up and feeling like I had some color on my lips and it inspired me to do a more natural makeup style and I feel more confident that way now, which is pretty cool. I didn't really know what I was missing when it came to lip color because for me, I hated the feeling of having anything on my lips. So all I would do is apply a lip plumper and then wipe it off so that the blood flow would go to my lips. And this treatment has really replaced the blood flow look. It looks completely natural and beautiful and I'm really happy I did it. But with that said, I was like, girl, I don't want to even suggest that somebody would get this done if they weren't doing their research and being cautious. So Madison, a lip blush specialist and permanent makeup artist that I trust and love her work, she's sat down with me and given us a deeper look into not just a consultation about this, but everything we need to know about lip blush and lip neutralization. Thumbs up if you enjoy. I wanted to know how long can somebody expect this to last and is it something that you notice as it fades? So there's actually, in a way, a whole science behind it. I'll quickly review it. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, it lasts with the pigments that I use, um, which are even flow pigments. They're formulated specifically for the lip area. Um, with these pigments, they last about three to four years in the lips. When it does essentially fade, it fades from being darker to like lighter, essentially. The way that it fades is, and how fast it fades, depends on the sun. For example, like if you're in the sun a lot, it's going to fade a lot quicker. Um, compared to somebody who usually avoids the sun at all costs, it can last easily four to five years. Um, when it is fading, especially when it comes to my neutralizing clients, what I notice is the warmer tones leave the skin first. So over time, it does become cooler, the lip tattoo. Oh. 
this is why a lot of the time I do recommend for my clients to choose warmer tone colors, so more on that peachy side, than right. more on that berry blue side, so that there is more longevity. So if somebody does choose, for example, a very like, you know, berry nude tone, um, this would require more maintenance than a peachy tone, for example. Right. Okay. That's so interesting to me. That is really, really cool. So mm -hmm. I have a real fascination with these treatments, not only in this sphere, but also with hair coloring. I think it's really cool when people like you as service providers look at things from a perspective of how it's going to age. So that's yeah. really cool because it's like, yeah, you might think it's a little warm to start, but as time goes on, you're going to be much happier probably choosing something a little more warm. When it does come to lip neutralization, this is a very difficult service to do. It is the hardest permanent makeup to do. Um, it's not only just because of the color theory, honestly. Um, the color theory is very, very important because if you do choose the wrong color, you can actually make that client's lips more cool tone and more dark, more uneven. One huge concern I've found recently, I've had a lot of clients come in from previous artists that they've gone to and they have basically permanent scarring on their lips. This is basically called hypo or hyperpigmentation. Um, it is formed by too much trauma to the lip skin area. So essentially that's why I tell you that I'm all about healed results because there's a lot of artists out there that they're working on a client who has a lot of melanin in their skin um, for hours on end. And what ends up happening is their lips are becoming so swollen and then you're causing so much trauma to the skin where melanin rich clients essentially they can hyper and hypopigment very, very easily. Right. Um, if somebody with darker skin gets a pimple, there's a good chance it's going to scar. So imagine having, you know, a needle that's a, like on the lip for way too long as well as applied with too much pressure, right? So what ends up happening is some of the client's lips go really, really light to the point where it's not even flattering and some of it goes really, really dark. This is the main thing that I would be cautious about when it comes to neutralizing right. i would never go to an artist that has less than a year experience i would say for neutralization um, because it's very like it's very sad what i've seen i've had clients come in very upset saying like you know i went to somebody to make me feel more confident and now i feel less confident i have to wear lipstick every day to hide what has been done yeah it's honestly it's a nightmare and it's horrible so that's why i didn't want to bring this up because if i can save somebody from having this happen to them then it's worth it because that is permanent scarring at that point right um, and, and i can show you even about, examples you spoke about how um because i've seen some neutralization that didn't go well just color wise i could see kind of droplets of like white and pink and it mixes in in a way that doesn't blend so i've seen as i was looking a lot of this up online where it doesn't go that well but it was interesting when you're talking about like having the needle like on the lips for hours is there any way that somebody before getting the you know while doing the vetting of like how certified how many certifications like is somebody continuing their learning do they have experience but is there something somebody can ask about how many passes like an artist does or something that would allow them to understand if they're maybe being worked on for too long or they're yeah so I would I would start off maybe even by saying how long you know, will you be tattooing for? So when it comes to myself and any artist that I've talked to who is truly good at lip neutralization, would say an hour and a half maximum to tattoo. When it comes to neutralization, you want to go to somebody who can explain to you why that is. Um, so for example, when I have clients come in, I explain there's only so much we can do in one session Otherwise, we are risking hyper and hypopigmentation um, because I do have a lot of clients that are like, do I have to come in for that touch up? I'm right. like, it's best for us to do this safely than to try to rush the process and make, you know, your lips even worse. Right. Because I would hate to ever do that to somebody. Um, right. So I'd say making sure, you know, asking them, how long do you work 
um, on lip neutralization. Like I have my, my appointments for three hours, but that includes time that I'm spending discussing things with the client, right? Setting right. up, sterilizing, everything like that. Um, so that's why it is that long. But I would say asking that artist to explain to you basically why like you're going to only tattoo for an hour and a half. If they can answer that, then they are trusted. You really have to understand that skin. A lot of artists out there that they prefer to just get in new clients because new clients is where we make our money. We don't make that much money on touch-ups, right? Right, because we're happy. So there's a lot of artists that want to get it all done in one session, but they do not realize how skin works. Actually, the less trauma that you cause to lip skin, the less peeling there is right so if there's less swelling bleeding this that which can happen from tattooing for too long or um, applying too much pressure basically they're going to have less scabbing happen and then they're going to retain all that color so that's basically my secret to good healed results is creating the least amount of trauma as possible so an artist really has to understand that otherwise you're not going to get a good result the other thing is is that you could end up going to an artist that it takes a million sessions to get it done which is really not good for your lip skin because over time every time you do it you know your lips can become a little bit more dry as well as you know more fragile thinner and as well as when it comes to neutralizing it's just more trauma to the area right 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 well that seems really good i feel more confident i mean i was so so happy to come across your work and i was it was just very clear to me right away but i just want other girls who are really interested in this because it makes sense for a lot of people um i want them to have a more clear perspective and i feel that that is something that we got we got there today um because yeah. it is a tough thing it's it's tough to be magnetized to something and know that it's so beautiful and amazing and you want it so badly but also to be responsible and do what you must do in order to have a really safe good outcome because this is serious this is tattooing so it is it, I'm it's, really thankful. yeah exactly it is a tattoo so that's why i always say to clients you know go, go to somebody who's good because it's not worth it to save um 100 or whatever it is it's honestly not worth it because the amount of money that you would have to potentially pay for in order to correct it, right? Because if you go to another artist afterwards, you have to pay that initial fee again, right? And then touch-ups, this, that. So just go to somebody, don't rush it, um, take your time. I always tell people, and I do this myself, watch somebody's page for any beauty service. Right. Watch somebody's page for a while, see what they post. Um, don't just rush it right away. Don't just like see it and then be like, okay, this is the one you want to see, you know, the content that they continue to post. Right. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much, Madison. I'm going to leave all of your information in the description because I know there's going to be a lot of girls who might not be able to physically come to you because we've got people all over the world. But yeah, I love that you have a lot of information on your website and on your Instagram. So mm -hmm. your, your account is one to watch just to get more info on what to look for and how to care for your lip blush. Yeah. And if any of you know your audience they have questions about anything they can always reach out to me i'm more than happy to answer anything or if they're unsure whether they should go to an artist um anything like that i'm more than happy to answer that is so sweet you are so amazing emma madison thank you so much that means a lot to me and i'm sure that will be really helpful because i know a lot of people just want to feel like they have some support and somebody to kind of like help them in the right direction so i really appreciate that if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you save it and share it with a friend who's interested, this could really help. I appreciate all of your attention today and I really look forward to seeing you next time. Please subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this one. I love you. See you in my other videos.